this is the first video you're looking at, you really need to go back and look at the first lot of um, lot of questions because look at all this stuff you missed. So um, if it is you've done that, that's all good. If you haven't, you can probably find that video on the um, the similar type of videos on the left right hand side, or you can just go back to the um, my channel and find the video that was before this because this is part two. So, um, yeah, let's, let's read this question. Let's do this question. A mixture of 0.2 moles of high, uh, um, water and 100 grams of carbon are placed in a 50 litre container and allowed to come to equilibrium subject to the following reaction. So this reaction happens and we get equilibrium. The equilibrium concentration of hydrogen is found to be this. What is the equilibrium concentration of water? Now, what I'm going to do is what is Kc as well. What's the concentrate? What's the equilibrium con constant for this value, for this equation? What we need to do is chuck things into um, our matrix that we had from the last question, a similar one, because we're trying to work out how much has changed here, what's changed and what the new values are. So we go initial, change, equilibrium, C, H2O, CO and H2 and plus, plus, equilibrium arrow. Initial um, concentration of carbon, a carbon is a solid, so I'm going to put a little dash next to that. But I'm going to just think it and put it in there that you've got 100 grams, all right? Because you can't really get concentration of a solid. It doesn't work. Concentration of water, we've got moles and we've got a um, volume. So we'll work out our concentration. Our concentration equals N over V equals 0, 2.5 divided by 50, which equals... Sorry, 2.5 divided by 50 equals 0 0.05. So we've got 0 0.05 molarity for our um, water. Now at the start, we don't have any of our products, so that's 0 and 0. What we're given is that um, the equilibrium concentration of hydrogen is found to be 0 0.04 molar. So this is 0, 0.0, this is 0 0.04 molar. All right, that was given to you from what the question is. You've gone from zero moles of hydrogen, sorry, zero molar of hydrogen up to 0 0.04. So we have to have a change of plus four molar. From this, we can use our stoic and work out how much of the rest of it is going to go in here, how much is going to go in for the rest of them. From here, 0 0.04 is going to be added. 0 0.04 is going to be taken away from our reactants because they're the reactants are reacting. If this increases, this must decrease. If this decreases, this will decrease. Same idea. I've had a forward reaction happen. And 0 0.04 molar over this side. I'm obviously taking away. Um, our hydrogen, sorry, our, our water, what's our um, final reading for our water? Obviously you've had 0.5 moles molar um, to start with, 0 0.04 moles molar taking away, we're going to be left with 0 0.01 molarity. So that is our concentration of water at equilibrium. Because you can see with our change how much has happened. Seeing out this way always allows you to see what the change that's happened, which is, and it's really, really important to do that. It just shows you what's going on and how it all works. Um, I won't do the K value because, um, uh, will I? I oh, will actually. So that's 0 0.04 molar. Okay. What we can look at is um, how much of this is left over, the solid. Now, our equilibrium constant actually doesn't deal with solids. It only deals with the concentration of um, gases and liquids because you can't get a concentration of um, solid. So our K value for this one would be equal to concentration of CO times the concentration of H2 divided by the concentration of H2O. All right, And that will be a K value for this one. You'll just substitute these two, three values in there. All right, that's that one. Next question, question number four.
Okay, question number four is a bit more interesting, even still. Um, obviously, question one, easy. Question two, easy. Question three, easy. Question four, slowly getting a bit harder and stuff like that. So, you get the idea anyway. Um, what we're looking for is um, how much of reactants and products are going to be left over at equilibrium. So, again, we're going to need to know how much has changed in this equilibrium. But the problem is they're not giving you a final concentration of anything. All they're giving you is what the K value for this reaction actually is. I'm still going to set it out in a similar fashion though, so I'm still going to say because I want to know what how much of each reactant and product will be present at equilibrium, I still want to know changes. So I'm still going to go initial, my change, and my equilibrium. Okay, and I'm still going to put in N2, O2, and 2NO for my reactions. Now I've got concentrations of initial ones here, so I'm going to put concentration of nitrogen is 0 0.8 and concentration of oxygen is 0 0.2, both molar, because it's moles per litre, so it's molar. Now here's the fun part, and we have a zero um, of this starting off with as well. We're not giving any change and we're not giving any values here, so we need to work out what our change is actually going to be. To do that, what we need to look at is our equilibrium constant. And we're going to make a couple of assumptions as well. Now this is a very, very, very small equilibrium constant. Okay? Our equilibrium constant is 1 times 10 to the power of negative 5. Now this means, because it's a very small equilibrium constant, we're going to say that not a lot of product will be formed. That means not a lot of reactant will react. And because it's so small, we're going to assume that the amount that reacts is absolutely negligible. So there's not much going to react at all. So our change, in effect, is our... We're going to put assumed change here. We assume the change will be pretty much zero and pretty much zero here. Okay? So we're assuming that we're going to have barely any change here whatsoever. That doesn't mean that we're going to have zero here, though. We're going to assume that we're going to increase this, and we're going to have 2x, because our coefficient here is 2. So we're going to say, we're going to assume we have negligible amounts of these two things reacting together, but we're still going to have a small amount of this forming. So it's an assumed change. So that means we're going to increase by 4x. So at equilibrium, will pretty much be what it is at the start, but we will have a small amount of product forming. Because our equilibrium constant is so small, we assume the change is going to be negligible. So therefore we have pretty much our start concentrations here, but we still have some there. Now what we need to work out is what this value for x actually is. Okay, And to do that, we need to substitute it in to what our k um, equation is. Kc for this will be equal to our products, which is our nitrogen, nitrogen oxide, to the power of 2, divided by our nitrogen times by our oxygen. Okay, This will be equal to 2x squared. We get to do it with a fair bit of algebra here, so it's, it's a lot of fun for you math kids out there. And 0 0.02, sorry, 0.2? Yeah, 0 0.2. 0 0.2 times 0.2. Um, 8 equals 0 0.16. So that equals 4x squared over 0 0.16. And our k value here is here, so it's going to be 1 times 10 to the power of negative 5 equals that. Okay, we solve for what x is, okay, and we look at it and we end up with, um, so we get 1.16. 6 times 10 to the power of negative 4 equals 4x squared. Divide that by 4, we get 4 times 10 to the power of negative 5 equals x squared. And then I'll just do this. So 1 times 10 to the power of negative 5 equals that times 0.16. Ah, sorry, that should be 5, that should be 6 there. Equals that 
divided by 4 equals that. Now we get the square root of this. So, so therefore, it's moving up to here, x equals the square root of 4 times 10 to the power of negative 6 equals square root, where is it? Uh, 2 square root square root of that equals 6.32 times 10 to the power of negative 4. Alright, so what this is, is what x is. So the um, amount of these things that have changed, how much that will um, be created. Anyway, so x equals that. So the amount, the concentration of NO at equilibrium is 2 times x, so times that by 2, we get 1.26 times 10 to the power of negative 3 molar. Okay, so that's how much will have been created. From this, we can work out how much was um, gone, was lost, okay, and we just take x away from these two for that. But this is the idea. Now, for this, we're assuming we're have under the assumption that. Oh,